Thanks, Mani. Um, it's inspiring to be here this morning to su support the Joy Thomas Foundation. I heard, I heard about Joy first as an electrical engineering undergrad at IIT Madras a few years after he had graduated and he was a legend. So we couldn't hear enough about, about him from our professors and how we would never measure up uh, to what he had accomplished. And so when I met him in person, it was such a surprise to find a really humble and approachable person. And um, it was a real pleasure to have him involved in the IIT Madras Foundation um, during the creation of a scholarship for his classmate, Malati Veera Raghavan, um, who, who also unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. Um, I'm very pleased to introduce our keynote, uh, next keynote speaker, Sridhar Vembu, who is the founder and CEO of Zoho Corporation. And he himself is a legend also from IIT Madras. Sorry, Arvind, this is, uh, we're gonna plug IIT Madras here a little bit. Um, and Sridhar himself is a legend. He's known for his unconventional choices. He started a company that was a product company in India when I, IT services were all the rage. He's also extremely involved in training high school students in programming to directly absorb them into, into Zoho. Um, and he has built Zoho into a global leader uh, with a large workforce based in the small towns of India. So a lot of the same themes that we've heard about uh, that, that were Joy's passions um, earlier in the talks today. So welcome, Sridhar. It's really great to have you as the keynote speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would love to just start with, you know, um, your interactions with Joy and how you got to know him. Uh, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about how he and Tony Thomas um, have influenced you in your in your journey. Uh, I got to IIT Madras in 1985. And uh, the very, the, before we even entered, there was a IIT sent us a, a kind of a brochure, what to expect in IIT and the, the whole cover was actually written by Joy. So that's the first time I, hmm. I had heard of it, right? I read this thing that he wrote, sort of a welcome to IIT note that he wrote a letter to incoming students. And uh, and then you got IIT just like what you found out uh, that was four years later uh, that Joy was a legend in IIT, right? And, uh, and and this was like ours was the first one that I didn't we didn't get to meet him, right? He had already graduated, but so we had heard about this. I was in the same department as him, I was in electrical engineering, so definitely the professors would talk a lot about him, and. The next time I met him in person actually was at IBM when I interviewed for a job. And in fact, uh, Arvind also interviewed me and mm -hmm. both uh, Joy were there at the time. And that was the first time I got to know him. And uh, I ended up going to Polka purely for weather actually. There, there was the, mm -hmm. My criteria was simply that I wanted sunlight, sunshine. So uh, instead of uh, in upstate New York, I went to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my criteria at that time. Right? I went to San Diego and I said, okay, I'm staying there for the weather. So that was the, and the, though I did, you know, Joy tried to persuade me to come to IBM, but I went to Qualcomm instead at that time. Uh, and uh, uh, that was how, and it was later, about two years later, I actually met Tony. I didn't know about Tony at that time. One of uh, Tony's classmates was the one who actually got me to Qualcomm. Rajiv, I think Rajiv, I don't know, Rajiv Vijay could be there in this uh, uh, meeting. And Rajiv was the one who introduced me to Tony when I told Rajiv that I'm going to leave Qualcomm to start something new. And Tony had left his job then and uh, Rajiv told me that you should, you should link up with Tony. And that is how our collaboration started. And Tony and uh, I have been together what 25 plus years now, since that 94, uh, 95 meeting actually. So. That's awesome. Um, and you also mentioned earlier that that um, uh, Joy was your, an angel investor in in Zoho and you know what became Zoho. Sure. So maybe yes. you can tell us a little bit about you know um, and people refer to the in kind contribution as well as. Uh, and monetary, right? So uh, tell us a little bit more about how that that happened and what you felt was his contribution. Yeah, uh, 
Tony, when we, when I met Tony, this was the 90, uh, late 95, uh, Tony had already left uh, Bell Labs to start his company and I was going to leave Qualcomm. And uh, the person who actually, in fact, the initial engagement, the way Tony and I worked together was that he needed uh, help with the software he was building. And we were doing this in India, myself and my brothers, and Tony ended up paying us. And, and that payment was actually coming from the money Joy <laughs> had essentially angel funded Tony in current terminology, right? <laughs> that is how it happened. And I used to tell a later joke to Tony that Joy should have gotten and taken our company as an angel investor. Really, that is, I really mean it. And uh, uh, because that was his, that was what supported our initial, it's like a sort of seed round. Our seed round actually came from Joy for this company. So, and I'm eternally thankful for this. And so is Tony, of course. And, uh, and I've said this in public and it is definitely very, you know, this is the kind of thing that at that time, like we were, Nobody's. We had nothing to get, nothing to show yet, and it was Joy's support that at that time that carried us through for the first maybe six months or something, and then we started getting something in. Mm -hmm. That was that was very vital, and uh, that it was that contribution that set us on the journey. And I should say maybe an auspicious contribution to us too. So yeah, yeah, the best kind of ticket. Yeah. Um, Maybe we can switch to your own, you know, interest in STEM. How did that start? Maybe you can give us a little bit of your your journey and probably what motivated you as a child, um, what brought you into the STEM field and what it has done for you throughout your career. Yeah, uh, just as uh, Arvind mentioned, I was really mathematics and physics were the only things that really interested me and then uh, through school, and the rest was there, were there, but was not something that you endured. <laughs> so um, that's what got me into IIT. And uh, then I picked a suitably mathematical field, and uh, same as uh, Joy and also Tony. <laughs> we all in the same field, information theory. I was in Princeton, and uh, uh, the difference was unlike Joy, towards the end of my PhD, I, I got a little bit turned off by the whole academic experience. I decided this is not the path I want to be on. Uh, I actually felt at that time that we were doing a lot of mathematical models. I wasn't sure that all of those models were relevant to whatever we were studying. And I, I, I wanted to do real engineering. That's actually one of the reasons I went to Qualcomm. I decided mm -hmm. we'll build real systems rather than only mathematically model them and prove theorems. We wanted to apply, I wanted to be Applied, yeah. uh, as an engineer. And that's how I went to Qualcomm. And that led to this uh, eventually about, uh, and that's where I learned to program, really. I had some, of course, in IIT you learned programming, but I never really did anything with it until uh, all through Princeton. Then I went to Qualcomm and we had to simulate systems. And then I got into software through that because I realized how powerful software can be to, uh, much more than what you can prove, theoretically, what you can simulate and what you can achieve through that. And that's how I got into software. I learned, uh, really, I learned to program there uh, because I had to do it for my job. And then two years later, we started this company and that's that's how we got in. And uh, ever since I have had a very sort of a practitioner's bent towards it, yeah. that you, my own uh, STEM, uh, uh, passion now is want to get a lot of people who may not think they're academically very bright into this. They can do it and then expose enough theory along the way. Because, you know, my, uh, 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 I feel that a lot of people, particularly in India, get turned off by, you know, initially just too much theory you've thrown at it. And this is true even in IIT, right? Even in IIT, you end up gaming the system a lot rather than actually learning because too much theory is thrown at you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is the, that is the what, that, what I'm setting out to do. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great point. I've, I feel like the IITs have started, uh, there is a very enlightened view in how the IITs were started 
in order to put a lot of resources behind what we felt were the best minds. And then eventually as life passes and you know experiences wash over us, we, we can come back and uh, be forces for good as MR uh, says. And I think you have embodied that and Joy has embodied that. Um, so in some ways, you know, that the IIT, um, that larger purpose is, is at work here. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about that point. I think even very early on, you felt that you need to expand this uh, the sphere, uh, sphere of influ influence, really bring in a lot more people into the tech enabled world and, and the sk skills development that Arvind was also talking about. You have taken that as your own passion project. Um, maybe you can give us a little bit of a background on where you're located, you know, how you've uh, made it come alive. I've seen pic pictures of you with a, with a dhoti, with a veshti, <laughs> and a bicycle in the fields of Tamil Nadu, right? So I think it would be wonderful for us to get a little uh, glimpse of, you know, what, what you imagined and what you've been able to create uh, over the last 20 years in STEM. Yeah. yeah. So the, the company, you know, this is, uh, uh, Tony and I are uh, both in this, and so are my siblings. And uh, from the beginning, we took a very humble approach. You know, Tony is another, you have to, uh, you know, he's Joy's brother in, in the way that he also is, you know, remarkably humble person. In fact, I often remind myself of uh, Tony's humility, just to, you know, to make sure that I don't, I, 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 I keep thinking of Tony. Tony is my Buddha, right? <laughs> and, uh, and um, I'm truly fortunate to, to have him as our co-founder and an advisor. And every day I talk to him, right? Practically mm -hmm. every single day. So that from all of our conversations, we started out with uh, uh, suitably humble products and then we have grown. And this is something that early on we uh, embarked on the strategy where uh, I'd say we'd be like the Japanese how they got to products. I felt that India should emulate Japan rather than America with this. That is the right model for us would be Japan and Taiwan later and South Korea and, and, and even China got the same way. Because see, the, the thing is in America, you can put together a team from around the world instantly. Mm -hmm. None of these countries, you can do that. You have to build up the team. That's what we are to do in, in India too. So, in other words, when you want to, for example, build video compression in India, you cannot assume that the talent already exists. You have to build it. And while in the US, you can pretty much assume because there was somebody would have done it before. Because all, a lot of it is born there. So, it's somebody would have done it before, right? And so, our approach from the beginning was how do we build the talent to build the company? Because we cannot assume that the talent is there. Mm -hmm. Pretty much we made the assumption at the beginning that talent won't be there. So we have to build it. So how do we go about building it? And that's how the whole uh, journey towards our so university, which is now called Zoho Schools of Learning, because in India, you know, the government doesn't like the word university to be used by unregulated entities. And we have refused to seek any kind of recognition from the government. We have said we will stay independent. We are not going to go to the University Grants Commission and say grant us recognition. So we prefer to change our name to Zoho Schools of Learning than maybe Zoho University. And uh, that's kind of, again, you know, part of my stubbornness and all this, that this is the way we will do it. And, and, uh, and uh, so that the Zoho Schools of Learning, our approach has been that how do we build the talent from the raw uh, potential there is, but not yet kind of realized. Let's convert the raw potential into kind of realized potential. That is how... Uh, we started approaching it. This was way back from even 96, we had to do this. In 2003 was uh, when the Zoho University was born. And now since we have about 15, 20% of our talent have no degrees at all, hmm. our company. It's 20% uh, mm -hmm. uh, of the people who write code here. No outside degrees, yeah. 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 yeah, and uh, that is how we've grown. And, and Along the way, we also developed an educational philosophy, which we had to, right? How do we do this? Because no, it's this is now we have coding boot camps, all of that, but when we started, none of that was there. So we had to come up with the program. And we also had to do this in a way because we are drawing our students from 
really disadvantaged communities in India. Mm -hmm. you know, none of our uh, students could have remotely entered IIT. It's not even possible. So we draw from uh, those ranks. So then how do we get them into this? So those were all challenges we had to figure out. And that is how we uh, did this. Along the way, I got so into it, I decided to move back to India and particularly to rural India. I, my own passion is to, to because 80, 90% of our employees come from smaller towns in rural India. They don't, I, even though we had our office in Chennai, uh, right uh, behind IIT, Valachery originally, hmm. but most of our employees did not come from Chennai. And so we, I decided then we will, instead of bringing people to Chennai, we will go where we draw yeah. people from. So that is, all, and I decided to move myself. So now I'm in Tinkasi. It's a small town, about 640 kilometers south of Chennai. I'm, I'm not actually in the town, I'm in a village about 20 kilometers from there. So <laughs> that's where I live. That's awesome. Uh, and then maybe the pandemic we... arrived and it didn't matter, right? Where you are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> now, now, yeah, now it's, uh, now it's fashionable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, so and maybe we can just finish up with you know how how J JTF could work uh, with you and like how, you know what inspires you to collaborate with uh, the Joy Thomas Foundation um, and how people can can help you with your larger project the larger social project. Uh, the Joy represents two things, right? Absolute brilliance and also remarkable humility. Is is the combination of these two. Unique, really unique, right? To see these two in one person. And uh, I want to take his humility and apply it to how we serve the really underserved uh, kids in India in particular, but also everywhere. We are actually expanding our programs uh, in the US and, and we even have a program like this in Japan and elsewhere. So this is the goal. And so I would like uh, the Joy Thomas Foundation to also focus on rural kids kids who are not going to be able to go to college, which in India is about 80% of the kids not mm -hmm. going to college. How are we going to get uh, the, the bright ones among them into STEM careers? And, and because once you get someone in, I can, you know, we have remarkable stories in our company where someone will come from a family where the, the monthly income would be like 8,000 rupees. And then within at all, three, four years, they're bringing 100,000 rupees a month. So they will be like 10 times more than what the original monthly income was. So it's complete change, right? Yes, and they yeah. vault into the middle class immediately from being poor. So we have been able to do this. And uh, I, I mean, I have engineers I know in our company who come from extremely humble backgrounds who do remarkable work. So this is the, the, the company is made possible by the efforts of these people. I would like the Joy Thomas Foundation to serve these because that would be truly in the spirit of joy. And we have had conversations in Tony's home and in Joy's home in Silicon Valley in, you know, on all these before. So that's what I would like the foundation yeah. to do. Thank you. And, and I really do hope that um, uh, the Joy Thomas Foundation um, can continue to do the excellent work that you have started off today. So thank you very much, Srida. This has been enlightening. Thank you for joining us this morning. And back to you, Mani. Thank you.